Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to replace a ground fault circuit interrupter. So ground fault circuit interrupters can go bad after a period of time because they do have an electromechanical switch inside. And what we've got here is a brand new ground fault circuit interrupter. So we're going to go ahead and replace this existing ground fault interrupter with a new one. First thing you want to do is make sure you turn the power off at the circuit breaker, which we have done. And then if you have one, go ahead and use a handy non-contact voltage meter to make sure that the power is off, or you can plug something in to make sure that there is no power to this. So we see there is no power to this because we've turned it off at the circuit breaker and we've tested it with a non-contact voltage meter but just go ahead and make sure you've got that power off. It doesn't hurt to double check. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the two screws that hold the cover plate on. Now that we have the cover plate off, we're gonna remove the two screws that hold the ground fault circuit interrupter to the junction box. Now we have the screws removed from the junction box, we can pull the ground fault circuit interrupter forwards out of the junction box and that's gonna make it easier for us to work on. You can see that there is electrical tape on the side of the ground fault circuit interrupter. So we're just gonna go ahead and take that electrical tape off. Just look for where it connects and pull the tape off or use a knife to cut this off. Now that we have the electrical tape removed, we can remove the wires from the existing screws. So we're just gonna loosen those up. You can see on this side, we've got the colored wire, which is the hot wire. Sometimes it will be black, sometimes it will be red or a different color. And then on the other side, we have the neutral wire, the white wire connected. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew both of these wires from the connectors on the ground fault circuit interrupter. Now that we have the wires ready to connect to the new GFCI, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this. On the back of the GFCI, it will have lettering that tells you which wire goes where. So on this one, the white wire or the neutral wire is gonna go on the right side here. And on the left side, we're gonna put the hot wire where we've got this black screw terminal. So it does say that here on the back of this GFCI. You can see it right there, and that indicates which wire goes where. So it doesn't matter which one you connect first, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, another important thing to note is that if you live in an area where you have plastic junction boxes, you will also have a ground wire. We have metallic junction boxes that ground the system through the junction box and the conduit, so we don't have any ground wire. But if you have plastic junction boxes, you're gonna to need to make sure that you connect that green or unshielded copper wire to the ground wire screw up here at the top and make sure that that is securely in place so your GFCI is properly protected. If you have metallic junction boxes and conduit, you will be protected by the actual grounding of this junction box and conduit itself. We're gonna go ahead now and secure the neutral wire, the white wire to the terminal intended for the neutral wire, and then just secure that in place. Screw down the screw to tighten it and make sure that it is securely fastened to the GFCI receptacle, like so. And now we're gonna make sure we put the hot wire on the hot terminal on this side and then secure into the switch. All right, now we'll secure the hot wire onto the ground fault interrupter receptacle and make sure we tighten down the screw holding this wire in place. We now have both wires secured to the ground fault interrupter receptacle and what I like to do is put electrical tape around the receptacle in order to shield these terminals from any making any kind of contact with the metal junction box or any other receptacles that may be in the same junction box. So we're gonna take our electrical tape and go ahead and just wrap this once. Now that we have the receptacle covered in electrical tape, we're gonna push it back in and make sure the wires fold accordingly 
and then secure it to the existing junction box. Now we can secure the ground fault interrupter with the two screws that secure it to the junction box. Now that we have the receptacle secured to the junction box, we can go ahead and reinstall the outlet cover. Now that we have the cover plate on, we can go ahead and restore the power to the ground fault circuit interrupter. Now that the power has been restored, we need to press the reset button right here in order to provide power to the outlet. Now the ground fault circuit interrupter outlet is installed and it does have power. You can see here the yellow light is on, which indicates that this is properly working. Now the first thing we're gonna do is test it with the test button here, which is used to make sure that the GFCI is properly functioning. When you press that, the device should turn off, which means the GFCI outlet or the ground fault interrupter circuit is working. However, once you've done that, I also recommend that you use a ground fault circuit interrupter tester like this one, which plugs in. So we're gonna go ahead and press the reset button so that this is on. And what we wanna see is two lights here, which indicate that the ground fault circuit interrupter is properly working. If you have a wiring problem, it will show up with one of these other indicator light combinations. You wanna have the two yellow or two orange lights up here at the top, which means that this is properly working. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and see what we get. We do get the two lights here, which indicate that it is properly working, so we are good to go. Now you can also test the functionality as if a device was not working and it should trip the GFCI or ground fault interrupter circuit in the device. Now that we've done that, I heard that this device tripped and we can see it is no longer functioning and the lights are no longer on. So we know that this ground fault circuit interrupter is working. Go ahead and press the reset and now we are complete with our installation. Now let's take a couple questions from the comments. The number one question I get is where is a GFCI required? So National Electrical Code dictates that you need to have a GFCI anytime that you have an outlet within six feet of a water source. So typically you're gonna have GFCIs in kitchens and bathrooms. Now, it has been shown that GFCIs will protect you in a lot of other locations and are a good idea. So that's kind of expanded over time. So now the standard is that you're probably gonna have a GFCI in your kitchens, bathrooms, but it's also a good idea to have a GFCI for outdoor outlets, garages, and basements because it's been shown that there are instances in all these locations where you could be exposed to water, the outlet could be exposed to water, or maybe you have a device that you drop in a puddle. So it's a good idea to have GFCIs in more than just locations like the kitchen and bathroom, which are traditionally dictated locations for GFCIs because they will offer you protection in these other areas where you may have a risk for water. And people wonder why you would have a GFCI in a basement and that people have basement floods and then your electrical system is going to be electrifying that water that you may be walked through to turn off your circuit breaker. So it's a good idea to have GFCIs in those locations as well to protect you. Now, another thing that I wanna talk about is outdoor locations where you have GFCIs. So it's very common that people have ground fault circuit interrupters installed outside and the outlet no longer works. It's really easy to protect your GFCI from water intrusion. You just need to make sure that you have a proper cover. We'll put a link to one that I commonly use below, but the reason that you want a proper cover is because you not only want to protect the GFCI from water intrusion, getting in between the outlet itself and the sheathing on your home, but you also need to protect the GFCI when you have something plugged into it or keep it from being exposed to water and snow that can build up or accumulate when you have something plugged in. Typically what happens is people plug in outdoor lights and you have a cover that doesn't close all the way. Water is gonna drip down the cord into the outlet and mess up the electrical mechanical switch and circuitry that is built into the GFCI. So simply getting a cover that both protects it when it is installed on the wall 
and when you have something plugged into the GFCI can be really effective at preventing your GFCI from going bad. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, or click on any of the links below if you wanna support us.